Well, hi, and welcome to my shop here. It's uh, March 11th today, and what we're going to be focused on, or what I'm going to be focused on, is the cartridge here, which I uh, determined uh, is not uh, does not have balanced output. It's very weak on one channel. So you can see I have the camera set up there. Let's take a look at it. Now, what I'm wondering about this cartridge is what exactly has happened to it that one side is weak. Um, other than a lot of guesswork, I really don't know. So I did flip it over, tried playing it on the other side of the uh, cartridge here, this side got what I believe is exactly the same result. So we're going to take a look at the construction of this a little bit as best we can. I have one that's essentially identical to it. Can you believe how lucky I am? I happen to have one. I look at it sideways and you can see they're essentially identical. But the difference is how the uh, this post is, is handled, how the bracket is handled. I'm not sure this kind of bracket is uh, is in there, this kind of bracket here. I don't know what they've got down below, but this bracket is, uh, is too wide. It's too wide for the tone arm. Now, how is the cartridge held to the bracket? I think it's essentially a. Uh, let me just do it like that. I think it's essentially a spring type thing happening inside here. Now you take this uh, screw out from the back, and this comes off, and the whole thing comes apart, or the cartridge comes off the bracket. And you mount the bracket, and then you put it all back together. And so I might be able to pop this cartridge out and pop this one in, even though it looks a little different. I kind of doubt that, but uh, that's what that's what I'm pondering now. I'm always nervous about doing stuff from the point of view that when I go ahead, sometimes there's no coming back. So it's a one-way route. And, and this player, it, it plays records. I mean, it makes sound. Now, you can listen to a record. Um, you know, you're only going to hear really one channel. Uh, you could sacrifice. Uh, yeah, you could just flip it to mono and just play mono and get the same volume out of both channels. But I think it's worth making an attempt here. Just looking at how the terminals were done on the back of this. Look what they've done there. They, instead of soldering the wire to the eye, back, back here is what I'm talking about. Instead of soldering the wire to the eye, they put it through the eye and then soldered it down here. Oh my gosh, did they solder it right to the cartridge? Shame on them, I doubt it. Let's see if that's the case. color coats there too, eh? Uh, looks like it's coming off. So let's look at red wire goes to the red dot. Hey, have I got dots on my other one? No. Maybe there's some words in there. Oh. There is a pattern. I don't see any indications. They, they quit with the red dots and the blue dot. Pull one of these off, just to be sure. Let it come off. Hmm, there it goes. I was about to say, I think maybe they soldered them. You wouldn't want to solder onto these little things. I've done it. Um, you wouldn't want to do it. Because the heat is going to travel up into the cartridge, and you're going to end up with the pin coming loose here, or something else happening so but I had done it in the past okay so the wires come off that's no problem don't take any more I'll lose track of who's who follow the same pattern here as on the other cartridge I'm sure it's the same result yeah so we were gonna look inside the cartridge a little bit as best we can here in how it's how it's constructed and I, I literally mean looking right past the needle inside there can't see anything. You know what? We can look at the other one. The other one, I'm sure it's identical construction. Uh, interesting thing is you can see right through it. 
right, right through. So now we can kind of see what's going on. So the, the needle is sitting on a rubbery material, molded material. Yeah, this one's got the needle missing. Look at, look at how off-center it is. Well, that can't be good. Looks like the tangs on the needle are supposed to drop into those little grooves there. I, I didn't think it was quite designed like that. Well, off-center. Way off-center. Now that's probably distortion in the rubbery piece. center up here. Maybe we can't see it for real. I mean, if I lift that needle up, the piece below is going to pop pop over. Is it straining the needle? It does seem to be bending the needle a little bit. The way they designed the needle, by the way, it needs to be relatively stiff, but it has to bend somewhere, so that's the bending area right in there, where the, this part can flex. I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? I don't know if I have to point that out. The little little tangs are going into those uh, divots in the rubber piece, the plastic piece. This looks great. This looks way off. Now, why, why would it get way off? This has just been sitting somewhere. Sitting with pressure on the needle? Or, well, I've shuffled this around in my box quite a few times. I don't know. Or would it just go that way on its own? Just, just, just go that way. Now, let's look at the one we're having trouble with, and the one we just looked at, one didn't look all that good. So now what I'm seeing is just a pile of dirt and dust in there. But it looks balanced otherwise. I'm going to pop that needle out of there. Oops. There we go. You can see a little bit better what's, what's up here. It's just so full of dirt. Now, what if I soak this with alcohol? How's that going to help? I'm going to flush the dirt right out. Let me take that needle off, too. We'll take a look at the structure underneath. stock one now what do we see what do we see now you see just an egregious amount of dirt in there without taking it out they pretty much want to flush it with stuff to kind of wash everything out I guess you need to put something in there to loosen everything up give it some time and then flush it out I could blast it out I have some air but, but you know it's in the tone arm here can I can I do anything like this I think trying to how do, you, how do you get fluid to run right through that and clean it out? I mean, the chance of this fixing the balance problems is nil in my mind. But why not try? I doubt that you know I could spray hate my favorite WD-40 in there, but I think that would be a bad move. Alcohol is probably the best thing because it, it evaporates away pretty quick, uh, so you get the washing action and then get. Get it out of there. Okay, alcohol's the winner. Let me get it. And then, you know, I'm gonna shove it in there with a brush, a small, like a paint brush, and just swoosh it around, and then we'll see what happens. I, need a, I managed to apply glue with all of my little brushes, so they're all glued up. Here's one. It's not very good either, but it's better. Okay, I got one. Okay, I put some alcohol. Now the, ang the gravity angles are all wrong here. I'm just going to go ahead and 
just start doing this. See what happens. Look at dark liquid come out of there. Right up in there. Now, obviously, if this not not so obviously, if this was a uh, you know a, a, a not a crystal cartridge, if it was not a ceramic cartridge, but a a uh, magnetic one or something like that. Mm. You would not want to do what I'm doing to it right now. But these guys are a little more rugged. Okay, more alcohol. Lots more alcohol. That's too much. There. Well, it certainly seems cleaner. Like, I got a lot of junk out of there. And another you know, a cleanup brush now. This one's a little on the large side. <laughs> it still looks like gunk hanging out of there. Let me get a poker. Supposed to move that freely? Oh, so I think I know what might have happened. So somehow this plastic piece, I got the gunk out, the plastic piece or the rubber piece or whatever this, this is, has to be in contact with the crystal. The crystal is, is up in here. Um, seeing this move back and forth. Oops. I've never actually smashed one of these apart to really see how it's done. Uh, you know, it's got to, it's got to deliver the motion of two. Like this is a stereo cartridge, so uh, motion is complex in here. This hasn't ruined it. I, I don't know what would. Seems to like to stay this way. Looks like there's something in there that uh, it must connect that rubber bridge somehow. Could be uh, maybe I can see two two little two little things down there. One on one side, one on the other. Black extensions of this rubber material here. Could be. Well, I could have had this hooked up to a uh, sound system the whole time I'm doing this. That might have been interesting to listen to. Well, he sure looks to me like that would be just the most rattly cartridge in the world. But uh, having done that, I'm going to stick the uh, needle back on. We're going to play this thing. I'm going to put the uh, I have to put that back on too. Oh, <laughs> so I'm looking at the wires here, thinking, well, how did I get the red one off? There's a wire there. There we are. <laughs> Panic over. Yep, yep, yep. There we are. Not on there very tight. Wow, it's loose as can be. Ooh, okay, maybe good enough for the test. Bend the wire so it pushes. Good enough for the test. Needle back on. If this fixes this, I'll be just I'll be stunned, but I'll be pretty happy. Oops. 
You know what? I practically dropped that right into the bottle of alcohol. It just went right beside it. <laughs> I could have dropped it right in the alcohol. Push too hard on this. Okay. Now, is that seated right there? Yep. Okay, everything looks fine. Except we're on the 78 side, Jim. So, good question. If you put a, seven, a uh, regular needle, like a micro groove needle, on the 78 side of one of these, it just becomes a double sided micro groove? Is there something different about the 78 side? I don't think so. It's the same crystals inside. Looks like the same support structure. I think you can do that. I'm going to do it because that's where the needle is right now. Okay. Did we just fix this thing? That's a good question. Um, so we're going to play it through the amp here, just as it's supposed to be played. Okay. And I gotta... So let's see, I had, all, I had this stuff plugged in very carefully to make sure there was no voltage between it, but I've unplugged it since then. So as soon as I can find... Plug this is the plug for that. Right, right, right. Righty, righty, righty. Okay, and the cheater plug is here. Let's get rid of this alcohol because sooner or later I'm going to drop something in there. Okay, cord is safe. Plug this in the wall. Only goes one way because this happens to be. Pull her eyes. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't want that happening. Those are live wires now. Don't want that happening either, whatever it was. Okay, don't go anywhere. You come down here before you fall. We switched on stereo. Can you tell I cleaned the record player up? Yeah, it looks cleaner, doesn't it? Nice and shiny. Okay. Now I'll apply power on the amp first. And the switch is off. This is the funny switch that you move intuitively the wrong way to switch it on. Okay, it's warming up just fine. We need a record. Uh, I'm going to stick with the foot in cold water. Hey, there's a picture of the guys. And that's what they looked like when I was in high school. That's kind of what I looked like. <laughs> I had hair down to my shoulders when I was in high school. Couldn't grow the sideburns. A little too young for that. Okay. Side. Unfortunately, this side of the record, I managed to drip glue on it there. I can't play that. Okay, so I think I think we're all set here. Uh, volumes are down. We'll put them up a little bit so we can hear things. Are you ready? Playing this on 45 again to avoid the copyright hits. Probably got this uh, selector wrong. We're in, oh, we are in phono. Hello. What's up? Th maybe this is the result of my cleaning of that cartridge. There's nothing. Come on, it can't be nothing. Set this set the mono, let's set it to stereo. <laughs> one side zero. So you know one side zero may mean there's just a wire disconnected somewhere. 
maybe that red wire came off the cartridge. Let's start here. What's with the hum? Just getting my hand close to the wire. Don't know why that would hum like that. I'm hoping this is not generating a copyright hit, because it could. Just that sound from there. Uh, how awkward is this? Well, let's look and see if that... What we can do here is we can do a... a so I have this switch, which is okay. It's set in the stereo position. That is still on, so we will inject a signal here. I'll put my finger on the shaft of this, and I will inject a signal. Volume up just a little bit. Okay. That's, that was this speaker here. This one here. So the other one should be here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Why nothing? Why, why, why nothing? Why would you get nothing here? We're in the mono position now. Are we? We're in the mono position. Okay. And go to the back one. Should still hear it. And this one. Nothing. Oh, 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 how come here? Well, I don't know why. Why, why? So, you know, there's four of them there. Four terminals. You'd think they'd be a pattern. You'd get the same thing this way or the same thing this way. You know, some kind of pattern. But it's the same thing this way across the across them. Could be maybe these wires aren't in the right place, but the bottom line is the cartridge is it, yeah, it is responding. Okay, let me put it back to stereo here. We're essentially checking the wiring, nothing more. Uh, so now we've got each of these up the same amount. Go from channel to channel, and we should hear. How come that went so quiet? What happened? It was, uh, oh, I, did I throw this? Is this what happened? What happened? Stereo, it's gone. It's this. Why would the hum sound louder from this, on those wires, on one channel? Only because the volume's not set exactly the same, or the volume level of the unit's different, or the tone controls are, are different. Let's put the tone up top. It's the same now. You should get the same level of noise. That's pretty close, isn't it? What's going on with these speakers now? Uh, I'm going to move one speaker so I can hear the stereo better. and. Uh, the microphone over my bench is stereo. You should be able to hear it too. Can I just pick this guy up and just move him over there? Yeah, let's put this down before it goes down. Oh, sorry about that. I smashed the uh, microphone on the way. There we are. Oh, 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 oh. These speakers have volume controls. Oh my gosh. Have I been fooled by that? Oh my gosh, I hope not. Okay, so... Ah, it's not supposed, supposed to be at one extreme or the other. Like all the way up or all the way down. For comparison. Oh, they're both just in the middle. Okay, so I've turned them both. Oh man, has this been the whole deal? They both turn the same way. Either turned right up or turned right down. What do we get? Wait a minute, okay, so 
both those sounds came out of this speaker and nothing came out of that. Now, how's that happen? How, how do you get that happening? What an oddball situation. So I do remember that the hot wires were red and white and the ground that was a blue wire and there's two there so in here is a red white and two blues so the two blues are the grounds those are the ones when I touch you don't hear anything the other two are the live ones we hear them for some reason they're not in the pattern I would imagine it wouldn't be very good I think if you flip the wires like that so you same same channel you're just flipping them around well that would be bad because you'd be flipping the ground into a wrong I don't know I don't know if it could work and the wires are backwards and that's why it's quiet I don't know that's that's an interesting <laughs> You know, like a lot of things, you know, you, you you start working on them, you get an idea in your head. If you run with that idea, well, good for you. But if you hang on, many more ideas may come. If you don't go running off right away. That's what I'm trying to avoid, is the of running off. Doing a pile of unnecessary work because I never figured out the simple problem. That the wires are on there backwards. How can they possibly be? There's a color coding. And then there's a red dot. Oh, I can flip it over and look at the other color coding. Okay, and what do you see? I see a blue dot, and really no dot, which would be white. Actually, there's a dot there. A dirty white dot. So, the wires are on in accordance with the dots. Uh, the chances of this step being wrong is fairly low as long as no one's touched this since the day it was, you know, came out of the factory. Fairly easy thing to switch those wires, though. Well, on the basis that I, I can do it, it's 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 a non-destructive thing. Yeah, we'll listen to it while I do it. Right? louder when I pulled it off. A cartridge must have some internal resistance. That's uh, You know, I'm, I'm working on the wrong ones. I'll put this back on. It's the red one that I... Well, how do I know which one's wrong? Well, it's color-coded, Jim. What are you doing? I'm doing this because I just don't know what else to do. It's a long shot, but I'm willing to take it. Still don't know why it's all coming out. Oh, is this thing in mono? No, we put this on stereo. Don't know why all that's coming out of one speaker and nothing out of this one. Volumes are both up. Don't know. Okay, so we've got the red one here. We'll pull off the blue one in the back. The assumption here is assumption, there's an assumption here. Yeah, uh, one channel's on one side. I think that's got to be a good assumption. There we go. Okay, blue and off. Uh, generally, you can fool with these wires for uh, a bit, and then they break. Okay, so I give this, you know, no chance of helping <laughs> at all. Okay, my cats were outside today, out on our deck. There's enough a snowless area. Stereo. What have we done? Let's find out. Nothing. It's probably going to 
going to be the case as I work on this cartridge. It's just going to go downhill. All on one speaker still. Full volume. Nothing coming out the other side. Why is that? Hang on to your ears. Well, that hum. Well, it's from my hand. It sounds like an open wire. We're not we getting anywhere here. I don't think we're getting anywhere at all. In fact, we're going backwards. So I've, I've switched the wires, and the result is nothing changed, really. Is that really the case? Nothing at all changed? Yeah, overall, I mean, we read the end of the song. Pretty good at putting it right in the groove there. Fooled by all these. Huh. What have I just discovered now? normal and inverse. It must be reversing the speakers. But it could be reversing the inputs. That's probably what it's actually doing. So what's this giving us? So on inverse, I get the left, left channel going. Normal, we hear nothing. The signal that was going to the speaker we were hearing is now being thrown over here. And I'm running this amp with very little power. Let's just get rid of that possible problem. Out of here now. Okay, so the confusion. My, it's my own confusion. Of course, when I switch it from speaker to speaker, I'm switching it from volume control to volume control. I to keep these set the same if I want to make valid observations here. Okay, so I'm moving it clearly from here to here one channel though. Which channel? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out, this might get noisy here, pull out the red. You still hear it? Must be on the white. Pull out the white. Put the white in where the red was. Yeah, now we hear it on the other channel. We take the red, pull this out, put the red in the one down below, myself a note about that. What did I do with it? I wrote myself a note to make this repair before doing anything. Here's my note. Solder input ground. Let's stop this. I will solder that input ground. Maybe that'll fix the whole thing in the end. And I won't have bothered messing up this cartridge any worse. Okay. Okay, so we're looking uh, on the top there is the upper uh, phono input and that's not causing a problem and below it is the other input that is causing the problem. Let's see what we can see down there. Well, so I see two resistors Those are fairly big ones. Brown, black, yellow. It's like 100K. 
two 100k resistors and they go to the uh, they go to the phono input terminals. Now uh, in the background down below you can see one it must be the ground wire running along. There's two of them running along. Um, I don't see anything obvious here. Okay, so I'm going to plug in a plug, and we'll see what happens. This is going into the problem, problem one. Okay, you see it kind of protrude there. Wiggle it around. Everything is moving. Everything is moving here. So I'm looking for something that just doesn't look right. That resistor, uh, the lower one, looks almost like it has a burn mark on it. Right on the end of it there. It's probably nothing. It's odd, but that's probably nothing. Okay, back to wiggling it. So what I notice, I know see the lower ground wire, the bare wire that's lower in the image, going to the back. When I wiggle the thing, the wire doesn't seem to move with it, does it? The upper wire, I believe, is catching the upper terminals uh, and the lower one. So I think that's the problem. Right there, we can see it. And let me just focus a little bit differently here. I just get some light right on the spot there. Right there. Ah, the wire's not soldered to it. Now there's a black wire soldered there. Black wire. I'm looking at it with my own eyeballs here. So the black wire is actually a shield that's been covered. So you can see the shield that's eventually going to the lead wires leading from this little little guy here, little board. Yeah, you know what? Just solder that, and uh, that problem will be gone. So, okay. My ever so crowded bench here. It's becoming a little difficult. Just get my soldering iron ready. I have some new soldering iron tips coming in the mail. Maybe coming today. my other soldering iron. Okay, now, can I see that with my eyeballs? Yes, I can. So we're going to have to switch cameras here. I'm going to have to clear the deck because uh, the camera you're looking through is right in the way of the work. see the wire goes right through and it never got soldered. So this is this what the last one a radio a couple radios ago I declared a factory error when it turned out to be me. I didn't do this. Get that soldered on there. Now is that enough to cause volume problems? You know it could be. It would be I would think um, very erratic know that this is all that erratic. Get on there. Okay, that's soldered. Let's take a look. See what we got. Okay, uh, 
wiggle the plug now and everything is joined now that wire is wiggling with the plug I think that you know it doesn't it just doesn't quite have the look I'd like I get in there and poke at it surgery by looking at camera images. That's solid. That is solid. Okay, so we'll give this guy another try now. Let's we'll see what the heck happens this time. What will happen this time? What's the prediction? My prediction is the same basic result. Okay, I'm going to put both channels in. Still thinking the problem is the cartridge itself because I tested right up on the cartridge but I tested with the cartridge still connected to the amplifier and be something going on in the amplifier which would make the signal appear low at the cartridge I have to pull all the wires off the cartridge and test it more thoroughly that way don't want to do that okay so power on there we go can we play the record player over here pretty sure we can oh I pulled it out that's why it stopped Plugged it. Okay, danger plug here. Going in here. Here we go. Volume's down. No, we're almost nil on this channel. absolutely sure now the channel that's low is the same one so I should be able to pull out what I think is the weak channel and nothing happened this shows you how turned around I am with this thing okay Let's start again with just the white wire in one side carrying it there in the other side. Hey, 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 come on. Something more going on. I thought I got it. I'm doing is I'm checking all the peripheral connections now to sort of verify it's not something else from what I thought it was. I feel like I gotta have this up a little bit to hear the, the, the effect. I don't get copyright hits when I play these records fast. It's, Both these didn't get soldered. Is that the case? Still something in here. Wow. I can't see it, but obviously something's loose in there. Just do some kind of general soldering. Could be a cold joint. I'm looking at it. it looks fine, but it's actually not. Um, 
Starting iron still going. Uh, I better unplug this. In soldering iron, often the tip is grounded. And uh, it shouldn't matter with these inputs, but the famous last words. Okay, now how am I going to do this? Because I can't really see that there's anything wrong anywhere. Could even be one of these resistors. Could be the one with the funny mark. It just looks. Looks perfectly fine. Now the other one. I can't see it. I can't get at it. Melted. Something. Something's melting. <laughs> I'll do the uh, these capacitor ones too. Just just redo them. Uh oh, this one's all got wires up against it. It looks perfect. Why am I doing this? I don't know what else to do. <laughs> okay. What'd that do? What did that do? What does the fox say? Hey, for the first time in my life, I found out what foxes say. I'm watching a, a nature video, and there were some foxes. Oh, I'm definitely in the zone. That's good. Doing the periphery things. Nothing. Wiggling the plug. Okay, so let's check and see if is it the resistor that's in there. Push on the resistors. That's the one that has no input plugged in. Now this is the one that we're that's humming. I just didn't get it. Soldered. I don't think I'm doing anything different. So any anywhere you have a cable coming out of the back of a stereo, uh, and people plugging in and out, you, as you can see, you wiggle the parts inside. And if there's anything there that can't take it, at some point you're going to get a problem. We're not hearing a hum now. It's still there. Is there something more going on?
So that's the conductor termination, uh, you know, the center pin. Pushing on it quite a bit, nothing's happening. And the upper one, which isn't got anything in it. And now I do the ground. Oops. It's, it's, it's all solidly wrong now. <laughs> Well, I'm going to plug the other wire in because the hum may disappear the moment I do it. Let's see. Yeah. So what? I think what's is this cord bad? Can the cord be bad? So if the cord's bad, then we would have grounding problems with it plugged in up here. Oops. But we don't. We don't have any grounding problems. We plug this one in. Now we got to pull this off to get the grounding problem to appear. There you are. Isn't that something? So what they've got here, I can see it all now. They have a, a, a loop of bare wire. It just comes along the top terminals, goes down, and then goes back along the bottom. So it's, it's a thing tying all the terminals together. But then that's got to go somewhere. That's got to go to a ground. You know, I can see dozens of them here. Every every wire coming in is carrying the ground onto the ground thing. So there's a multiple ties back to. Well, what are they doing at the other end of these wires? Sometimes they don't ground the. Uh, that's right. It's not it's not grounded there. These ones are. Some are. Some aren't. These are. These aren't. They just nip the uh, shield right off. That's not even. Is that even a shielded wire? Yeah, sure does. Okay, so some kind of weird ground thing going on. So the ground. So so which wire is the one that's really going to the chassis? There isn't one really going to the chassis down here. There's no chassis terminals. This terminal strip, strip has a chassis, you know, terminal, but it's not being used. Is it really to the chassis? So this is an insulated plate here. And it may not go to the chassis. Um, What would that matter? There's still a bad connection. So I'm going to short out the resistor there. I'll bypass it. Is that be a better word? Attempt to bypass it. And go way down here. These are really these are scaldingly hot tubes here. Touch those, get burned. Turn the volume down while I'm doing this. Get in there with my fingers. Okay, that's on the. What did I put that on? I put that on. I put that on the wrong thing. Okay, what I'm trying to do here. Remember what I'm trying to do. Um, I want this on the ground. Well, no, I'm trying to bite the jam. Come on, come on. Was it too late? It's almost noon. Too late in the day for me. Okay, bypassing this resistor. This resistor here. Does that eliminate the noise? Sure don't.
this receiver is uh, it's like a receiver. Why can it be that sensitive? And I'm doing is I'm bringing together two different kinds of metal over here, and you know the electron clouds are jumping. Because I'm holding on to one, I keep recharging it because I'm holding on to one. I must supply. Uh, amplifiers shouldn't hear this kind of stuff. What that means is, you know, and the, the hum is indicative of two. We're not, we're, we've got an antenna hooked up back here because the ground is gone. It's got, it's all indicating the same stuff every time. Now it, it's like just completely gone, which is actually better. Let's put this up here. No hum for sure. Back down here. Oh, I knocked the volume down maybe. No. What else could be going wrong? Um, failure of the center pin to make contact? Okay, so I can watch that. I can see that happen. Well, that sure looks like it's in contact. I'll squeeze it a bit here. What is going on? Wires come off the cartridge and uh, open. On, yeah, no, I think they're all on, aren't they? Let me take a quick look. If I poke around the cartridge a little bit, in case I'm being fooled here. Well, I can turn it, that's, that's going to poke it enough. What's that telling me? Everybody's humming. Once again, this simplest of stuff here is just driving me around the band. Go into any of these other ones. Hey, why don't we just... Wait a minute. Okay, we're on tuner. Why don't we just use another one? Just, they're all the same. This guy will eventually do it too, eh? Yeah, why? Yeah. Come on, Jim. There's better solutions here. Stick it in the tuner. Tuner input. Okay. Hey, breakthrough. <laughs> I'm all tangled up. Camera's all tangled up. Okay, we get one more shot of this, and then it's, and then it's, I don't know what time. Okay, volumes are set really up. Amplifier is on. Record player is not plugged in. Okay, we plug it in. Foot in cold water. Come on. So close. Um, just by uh, working these volume controls at different settings, I can kind of get a balance happening. Uh, but ultimately, the volume is restricted um, on the on the quieter side. You can only get this so loud and still have it balanced. Let's just listen to a little bit at the right speed for a moment here. I can get away with a few seconds of this. And we'll hear what this actually sounds like. Bass. Put the trouble. The tone controls in the middle. Here we go. Whoops. Uh, don't do that. Okay, set the Okay, I've set the poor record player there. He's going home. They're gonna be that way. I'm gonna shut off. That's what he's saying. Oh yeah? 
got news for you, record player. You're called back into action. Now we're on stereo. Wow, that's really close to being acceptable. Really, really close. Uh, okay, I think I'm gonna stop at this point. Um, the, the owner of this is watching these, of course, so he's gonna see all this. He's gonna realize the situation. He can decide, of course, what, what comes next. Uh, that's as far as I can get with everything as it is. Uh, and going forward from here, changing the cartridge and all that kind of stuff, risk, risk, with possibly little benefit. Okay, that's that's where it stands. Thanks for watching.